was something that happens right when I press record. But I was drinking my water and I must have squeezed the bottle and then I set it down and it went boom. You had to be here, I guess. Half a bottle down. You see? Um, anyway, happy Sunday, guys. I just got back a little while ago. I went to church and then I went out to lunch with my dad. And um, I had plans I was going to go to hot yoga tonight at 4.30. But then I decided that I'm going to wait and do hot yoga during the week. Um, excuse me. Um, because I just need a day where the, the biggest thing that I think stresses me out in my life right now, other than running this amazing startup company that's exploding, thank you, um, I, I don't mean to complain or sound like I'm complaining, but the most frustrating thing in my life is feeling like every hour of every day, all the time, is I can't ever just stop and go, I think I'm going to go read a book. I mean, of course, I can say that. Right, but I'm just in a perpetual state of the second I hang up a call, I gotta get on the next call. I gotta get on, the, you know, like my days are booked like one, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Then I'm like leaving here and I'm either rushing to, to go to yoga, hot yoga over there, or I'm getting up in the morning, gotta get up in the morning, gotta have my breakfast at this time, gotta do my workout at this time, gotta do this because then I have this and then I've gotta get these three proposals here. Everything is just like, it's just constant. Like, not even having a chance to take a breath. And I guess because that's part of what is my problem when I go to sleep or try to go to sleep, and I said that on purpose, um, I go to lay down to, to shut down and I just don't shut down when I go to sleep. I'm just sitting there and the mind is still going the way it does during the day. So this is what um, I'm figuring out. I'm figuring out how to, um, first of all, take, there, there's gotta be at least one day a week where I don't, have, even if it's stuff that I like, obviously it's not a chore to go to hot yoga. It's one of my favorite things to do. I mean, it's when I totally do relax my mind most of the time. <laughs> Sometimes I do think about business and then I come out of there going, oh my gosh, I just had the best idea. But, you know, it's not like it's a, a chore to go there. I'm just saying it's the whole process of literally like never, there's never a calm moment in my life. It's always from one thing to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. The next thing. And it just, I'm always, I don't want to say I'm always rushing. It just feels like I'm always rushing. I'm always like, I gotta go tanning. And then when I get out of tanning, I gotta go here. And then I'm gonna stop over there. And I've gotta go to the grocery store. And then I've gotta go to this. Oh, and I haven't done this. I've gotta stop over there. And then I've gotta call this person. And I'm in the middle of things that I should be just enjoying and relaxing, like tanning. And I'm texting myself to remind myself about this and this. That's kind of the nature of my life right now. And it's only gonna get busier. But that's like the number one thing that annoys me. So I decided today, as you can tell, I got dressed and I was ready to go to yoga. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go during this week at night and I need to have one day, whether it doesn't need to be every Sunday, but there has to be one day a week where I can just be in my house, you know, and not, not be like rushing somewhere and not, there, there's gotta be a day when I have no rushing. I just realized that. Um, but anyway, um, I wear this top underneath it pisses me off and by the way a lot of you guys ask me when I have these really colorful um, sports bras they've been the uh, Victoria's Secret sports bras and in fact some of uh, my BFFs got me um, Victoria's Secret gift cards for my birthday and so I got some more um, in purple and pink and bright green and bright blue and then I want to get some of their workout tops too um, but anyway here's um, a couple of funny things, not funny, but these are good observations that I'm very excited about. And then the other thing I'm gonna tell you, so many of you guys have written to me, lately especially, saying, you know, I really appreciate that you're sharing your ups and your downs and kind of when you have bad thought processes and how you're getting past them because it makes me feel like I'm not alone. I think that's really key. Um, it, it doesn't make me proud, like I told you guys, it doesn't make me proud to tell you like, that my waist is, what, four inches bigger than it was a couple years ago. I'm not excited to tell you that. That's not something you want to say at a party, especially if you first meet a guy. Hey, what's up? <laughs> my waist is four inches bigger than it was before. Um, he'd be like, check, please. Um, 
if I, I'm sharing it with you because I <laughs> I wish that I would have had somebody in my life that had gone through this whole perimenopause change of life, metabolism change, um, that I could have watched out for it. Because there's the, the biggest thing aside from, yeah, you know, your body temperature will change, you get the fact, like, I'm hot all the time, all the time. I don't know, anyway, you, you deal with that and, and there's weight gain and then there's, you know, headaches and, and all of this beautiful stuff that men never have to deal with. Um, and then we have to just deal with and kind of make our lives continue to go on and be like, yeah, I can still work, I can still work out, I can still do all this stuff. But the biggest thing when I look back at the past two years, realizing, you know, I wasn't diagnosed, I didn't have the blood work done until, um, I'm trying to think. Anyway, whenever it was, the thing that I didn't do, I wasn't looking out for it, and then once the process had started to happen, there were so many times, and you guys have seen this on my blog the past two, two and a half, maybe even almost three years, is, you know, I knew I was gaining weight, I wasn't fitting in my sports bras, I, my, my trainer was like, are you pregnant? Because my boobs went from like this to like really big, I'd lost a lot of weight, and then I just was rapidly, you know, my boobs were falling out of my top, and I gained weight in my tummy, and he's like, what's up with that? And I'm like, and I'm hungry all the time, and bitchy, and blah, 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 and he's like, are you pregnant? No, that would require getting some action. So um, the thing that happened to me that I wish I would have paid attention to more, ladies, is <laughs> you, you tend to react and get angry about what's happening to you, right? So you're like, what's going on? I'm so frustrated, whatever. And then if you do what I did, which is what I think a lot of women do, you just get pissed off and you get depressed and, and you can feel like nothing you're doing is working. And I certainly can tell you, there were more times that I was depressed and not working out and being pissed off and crying. You know, and then I had that, that skin condition that was all over my chest and my neck and my back and my arms. And so I didn't want to leave the house. So I, instead of working out, and then my doctor at the time was telling me like, don't put hair product in your hair, keep your hair off your head, don't put makeup on your face, you know, everything. And then I, I remember asking him during a certain period if I should work out. He's like, well, probably sweating will exacerbate the symptoms, so don't. And so then, you know, I felt depressed, I felt fat, and I'd be in my house hiding from everybody in my robe and my sweats a lot. When you're in your robe and your sweats and you're not working out, you're making the condition worse because obviously your activity has gone from here to here. But then the other thing is, this is the biggest thing, when you're not getting in your workout clothes every day, when you're not getting in your favorite, um, you know, going out clothes, your favorite jeans, which I certainly wasn't because all I did was want to hide from the entire world. I didn't want anybody to see me. And um, when you do that, you stop, you don't notice. <laughs> There's these creepy areas that you gain weight in when your body changes later in life that you've never had weight gain in before. I don't know if this is true in men. It seems to me, from what I've read and from what I notice, that men as they get older just literally gain it all in their in their gut. They gain it all in their middle. And you, you tend to see men who, you know, they have their um, jeans and they drop their jeans way down low. Some of them have this just huge gut. They gain it all in their, in their tummy. Um, women can gain it everywhere. I've always tended to gain my weight I'm hourglass, so I kind of gain it everywhere. With this, it's so weird because it's all behind me. Who would think that you'd gain weight on your freaking back? And let me just tell you something. The place that I am the most annoyed with right now, I can tell you this. I, I came home from being gone um, at that gluten-free conference, and I'm, I put my jeans on today, and there's so much more loose in my um, legs, so much more loose in my butt, so much more loose kind of falling down off my tummy. The, the tummy bulge is, is, um, is getting, and I was like, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. I go to put my workout clothes on, and whenever I put my workout clothes, this is just another area that I measure myself, I always look in the rear reflection, and I'm like, what in the, how can I possibly have a roll there under the bra line? A roll there, I'm like, how is that possible? How is it possible? Am I losing it here and it's like getting thrown on the back? I mean, I feel like I have, anyway, I'm just telling you guys, I'm sharing this with you because number one, I'm not, it's not gonna stay there. 
I'm on it. I am doing so good on my diet and on my working out, and it's time to take it up another notch, but I'm telling you, women that are younger, that if you think you're just going into this time of your life where your body's changing, or if you're in your 20s or you're in high school, just remember what your Aunt Kelly told you so that you can look out for it, and all I could say is, it is what it is, I can't change the past. I just wish that when this would have started to happen, I would have maybe not listened to my doctor, gone to a woman doctor who finally took my blood work and diagnosed me, and I would have kept working out and stopped feeling sorry for myself. Um, and certainly kept, it, it, instead of just giving in and going, oh, I give up, everything's so depressing and blah, blah, blah. It's very frustrating to, it's frustrating, that's all. But I can either do one of two things. I can sit around and whine about it and look back and keep talking about it. The only reason I'm talking about it here is because so many of you are asking me questions, and this is what I'm telling you. <gasps> Put your workout clothes on every day. Stick to your workout program. Working out is not going to, it's not going to hurt you. Um, doing a little activity every day is not going to hurt you. Don't give in to being depressed and sit on your couch and be sad. Stress is only gonna make things worse. I mean, these are things that I will not react that way anymore. Um, when I catch myself getting down about stuff, when I catch myself starting to feel really sorry for myself and think those thoughts of like, you know, oh, I must be the only one. There's no way this is gonna work. No, if I get upset about something that I see, I'm I'm just like, you know what? I'm doing damn good. I've come this freaking far and I'm not gonna let one little view in the mirror, or one little measurement on the tape stick affect everything I'm doing and make me stop and backpedal. I did that for two years. I kept starting and stopping, starting and stopping, starting and stopping, getting depressed, getting upset, getting pissed, changing my course. I'm not doing that anymore. I refuse to stop. I refuse to give in. I refuse to believe that I can't accomplish my goals because I've already started. I mean, just what I have done in the past four to eight weeks, and I have to look on my calendar to see when I actually started some of this stuff. Um, I haven't been drinking diet soda, never thought I could do that. Not to say I don't fantasize about it all the time. How long have I been taking? Um, so I haven't been drinking diet soda. I'm down to one cup of coffee in the morning only, and most times I'm actually doing only half a cup of that coffee. Um, I stopped drinking caffeine after about one o'clock. Um, we're working on breaking up with Excedra PM. Right now I'm still dating him, so there's that. Um, I have also not had wheat, bread, um, just anything with wheat or processed foods. I can't say I'm gluten-free uh, yet because um, I'm still having coaches oats for breakfast and I don't believe that that's gluten-free. But that's really the only kind of, if you will, gluten-y food that I'm having. Um, I'm drinking a ton of water. The next phase is to add um, my vitamins back in, all of the vitamins that I've read in that book. I should be taking, you know, the magnesium, the zinc, uh, the probiotics, um, work on my sleep, and now uh, just really focus on my diet, not changing what I'm eating, because I'm eating great. I'm very, very pleased with what I'm eating. What I need to do is eat more throughout the day so that I don't go and eat at like eight in the morning and then not eat till three. Um, that tends to be what happens too much with me. Um, so working on that, making sure I get my protein, um, because I have muscle building goals, and um, that's it. I just refuse to believe that um, I can't do what I'm gonna do. And every time that I get upset, instead of giving up and giving in, I'm going to do more. So right now, I'm shooting my vlog, I'm telling you guys exactly what's going through my head. I'm not going to hot yoga, but I'm moving this stuff out of the way. I'll tell you what that stuff is in a second. And I'm gonna do a kick-ass workout. I think I'm gonna do lower body, um, and work this tushy. And uh, then what I was saying is down there, which I really am excited, speaking of tushy, to put together is this jump sport um, mini trampoline. And trust me, when, I, when my friend Carla told me about a trampoline, I'm like, Carla, I'm a grown woman, okay? <laughs> and, she's, and she's like, no, it's fun. And I'm like, okay, I'm sure it could be fun. And I would look like a moron sitting in my house and my neighbors who like to watch over there will be watching and they're like, oh, uh, now she's on a trampoline, fantastic. But Carla told me, she goes, you will not believe how much this gets your cardio up there and works your lower body. And I'm like, I'm sold. So I'm gonna put that together and I'll see if I can do a review. I'm sure I'm gonna get a bunch, bunch of you writing me a comment going, please Kelly, do a vlog where you're jumping on a trampoline. I have to work on that. See if there's a, where there's Photoshop, is there a gigolo shop? <laughs> I don't want a bunch of like, views of me all over the internet looking like a total moron, like, and your face is like, like it's on a, um, 
roller coaster. So there's that. I am going to go work out. I am not sad anymore. I refuse to be sad. I refuse to give in. And I'm just looking at my goals and saying, okay, that's going to be much better tomorrow. It's going to be much better next week. I'm getting better every day, and so are you. And it's really hot today. I've got my windows open, and it's like, um, it's hot. Tomorrow it's going to be, I think today's like high of 80, and tomorrow's supposed to be high of 60. Typical Chicago. So, drink your water. Whenever you get upset, recognize that you're getting upset, and stop in its tracks and say, I'm not doing this. I'm going to do something good about it. I'm not going to do something bad about it. Every time you get upset, you can go one way or the other. You can get worse or you can get better. Obviously, we're going to get better, right? See you tomorrow.